We're focusing on a uh, new aspect of math today that you've not seen before. It's called the Pythagorean Theorem. Um, if you're wondering why it's called the Pythagorean Theorem, there's a guy called Pythagoras in Greece a long time ago. And um, basically, he, he came up with this rule that said, hmm, um, the sum of the squares of the legs of the triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. And that probably means nothing to you at this point. But uh, by the end of the day, hopefully you'll know exactly what he's saying, and you'll agree with him. So let's go see what Pythagoras is talking about. Um, <clears throat> again, he, he pretty much said this, the sum of the square of the legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. And I, I know that it doesn't look like it says hypotenuse. Um, just pretend that the E is silent, and so then you could say hypotenuse. Um, but just remember there is an E in there, so it's not hypotenuse, it's hypotenuse. Um, this is really important, though. It only works on right triangles, and we'll probably say that a lot during this video. But um, we just want to make sure that you understand that, hey, a right triangle has a right angle. So if a triangle does not have a right angle... Uh, like let's just say this equilateral triangle where all the sides are the, the same uh, and it's all 60 degree angles. This would not apply to this. You're, you're only talking about right triangles today. And um, we're going to be taking a look at uh, the lengths of the sides of the triangles and we've got to figure out well what's a leg and what's a hypotenuse. Um, if we can get that down then it'll be pretty easy. What are the legs of a hypotenuse in a triangle? Well, let's see. Let's uh, let's put the legs in red, and let's put um, a blue should work for the hypotenuse. Okay. So now that we know what we're looking for, the first thing I do is I, I look for the hypotenuse when I look at the triangles. You might look for the legs, but I, I go for the hypotenuse. Um, you find the right angle. So here's the right angle, right? And you look at the side of the triangle that does not touch it. So it's not this side, because see this side touches that right angle, and it's not this bottom side down here that touches the right angle. It's always the side of the triangle furthest away from the right angle. That is your hypotenuse. Okay? And then what's left over is the two sides that are touching the right angle. We call that the legs. So again, um, the legs I'm putting in red, it touches the right angle. So there's a leg, there's a leg. And then we're left with the hypotenuse way over here. It's just the, the places of the triangle. Okay, So let's go find our hypotenuse on this one. Here is my right angle. Which side does not touch it? Not this side. Not this side. This one way over here. Just start to train your eye to look away from the right angle. And you'll find the hypotenuse. And now the legs right here. Okay, so if you can find these, you'll be setting yourself up for success. If you can't find them, um, it's going to be a very difficult day. So let's practice with it just for a little bit. At this point, um, I'm going to ask you to sketch uh, these three triangles out. You'll probably want to pause the video if you're watching this at home, and then we'll go through and identify all the legs and hypotenuses shown in these three triangles. There they are numbered, and let's go through and check it. Um, let's see, the hypotenuse of this one is 13, and the legs are the other two sides. There's always two legs to these. Actually, let's, I'll tell you what, let's, let's start using the, the highlighter. Um, that'll be a little bit easier at this point. Let's just use the highlighter. We'll do the, the legs in like a, a pink. So there's one leg. Here's the second leg. Um, hypotenuse on number two, opposite of the right angle, right? Does not touch it. And then the legs go straight into touching the right angle. Same thing for over here. I always find my hypotenuse first. And there's the legs. So that's not bad. Um, hopefully it's not bad. But what do you notice about the hypotenuse? I, I put the lengths on here, how long these legs are, and we, we need to take just a second to look at that. What do you notice about the hypotenuse compared to its two legs here? The hypotenuse is the longest leg. Or the longest part of the triangle, excuse me. Or let's just call it the longest side of the triangle. And let's see if the other two triangles 
play out for us? Well, 1300 is bigger than 1200 and 500, so yep, hypotenuse is the biggest. And the hypotenuse 10 is definitely bigger than 6, and it's bigger than 8. So the hypotenuse is the longest side of a triangle. Just remember that. Um, at this point, though, we get to play a little game kind of like what we did with functions, how x and y were also known as domain and range, or input and output. Uh, we're now going to call our legs A and B. Okay, There's two legs, so we'll call one leg A and we'll call the other leg B, and we'll call the hypotenuse, yeah, C. So um, at this point, I want you to pause the video and label your hypotenuse and legs. Make sure you use A, B, and C, not legs and hypotenuse. So this will be my hypotenuse. I'll put that in abbreviations just for the first one. And this would be leg A, you know, one of your legs. And this would be leg B, one of your legs. We don't care which one's A or B. It's just the, the legs, it's, it's regardless of the, both the legs, so just label them A and then the other leg B. Um, this one would be easy enough. And hopefully you came through this correct. Now, if you're saying, oh, man, I, I, I did my legs a little bit different than what he did. Well, um, you know, I, I had it as A and B. Well, it very easily could have been um, A here and, and B there. It, it does not matter. Um, it could be either way. It's just as long as you have the hypotenuse as the C and then your legs as A and B, you're fine. So now we finally get to the part where we can take a look at what Pythagoras was saying. And again, he said, you know, the square of the hypotenuse. Well, here's the hypotenuse, and here's the hypotenuse, equaled the sum of the square of the legs. Well, here's the legs right here. So let's go try it out and see if they actually equal each other. Um, shouldn't be that bad. Let's square the sum of the legs. So this three inches will become squared. This four inches will become squared because the sum of the squares and the sum talks about adding them together. So three squared plus four squared equals, what's the hypotenuse? Oh yeah, five. So we're going to square that because the square of the hypotenuse. This becomes nine, 16, and 25. And then you tell me, does nine plus 16 equal 25? Yes, it does. It's just a cool little relationship between the legs of a right triangle and the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Let's go try this one. Let's see. This would be 25 plus 144 equals 169. Uh, 144 plus 25 is... 169. So that's true. So this uh, time to test the Pythagorean formula, uh, which is a lot of time written as a squared, what's a represent? A leg. Plus what's what's b represent? Another leg. So b squared equals the square of the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is c. Again, this only works on right triangles. Um, you put your legs into the AB slots and your hypotenuse into the C slot, and it's A squared plus B squared equals C squared, and they will equal each other, and it's a perfect balance there. Um, let's determine if uh, the following lengths of triangles uh, sides determine if the triangle is a right angle or not. So let's do the first one real quick. We'll use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If you're sitting here going, I, I don't know which side the hypotenuse is, we said the hypotenuse is always the longest side. So um, 2 and 3 would be uh, our legs, so those are a and b, and the longest side is always your hypotenuse. So let's just go plug those in. 2 squared plus 3 squared equals 4 squared. If it equals each other, it's a right triangle. So this would be a triangle with the sides of 2 three, and four, and if it's a right triangle, it would be like a right angle here, and this would be the hypotenuse. So let's go see. Four plus nine equals 16. Well, four plus nine does not equal 16. Four plus nine equals 13, so no, it's not a right triangle. Pause the video and go check the last three problems. Well, here we go. Let's check number two. Because I can slide these in, it is a right triangle. Um, they equal each other. The sum of the legs equals the sum of the hypotenuse.
excuse me, the, the square of the... And here we go. Uh, my hypotenuse, this time it was given to us as C, but again, it's the longest of the three sides. So 4 squared plus 6 squared equals 8 squared. Let's see, 16 plus 36 equals 64. Uh, this is actually like 52, um, so it does not equal 64, so not a right triangle. Let me just make a triangle sign here and speed that up. And then the, the very last one, again, uh, they tell us this is C, which is our hypotenuse. These are our legs. The sum of the square of the legs, 10 squared plus 24 squared, would equal the square of the hypotenuse. So we've got to square the hypotenuse, 26 squared. So 10 squared becomes 100, 24 squared becomes 576, and 26 squared becomes 600. And 76. And as you can see, these two definitely do add up to equal 676. So, yes, it's a right triangle. All right, so um, Pythagoras came up with this idea um, that just stated the sum of the squares of the legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. And when we're given three legs of a triangle, we can plug them into that relationship, you know, square the legs and add them together, and then square the hypotenuse and see if the two sides equal each other. If they do, we say, yes, it's a right triangle. Uh, like we said on numbers 2 and 4, if they don't equal each other, like 13 equals 16, it's not a right triangle.